Article 16, what is it? I'll summarise it for you. I've been a member of the BMFA, right, the British Model Flying Association, for a couple of years. And I'd signed up to the BFD, which is the, the, the British Drone, the BDA, the British Drone Association, which is part of, part of the, the BMFA, okay? And it's like, I think it's about 47, 49 quid a year or something to join. I'm not sure, something like that. But I was a member for a couple of years. And as a member of a group like that, an official association uh, who have certain um, exclusions to the drone law, if you're part, as a member, you, you can fly with exclusions uh, because of the, 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 the CAA has allowed groups and associations certain privileges and certain more freedoms than individual flyers, okay? It's it's built into law and it's just the way it is. Take it for me that there are groups and associations and if you are a member of them, uh, because of the, the the less restrictions that a, the group is allowed to have, you have those benefits. And other benefits too, like insurance and different things, right? So I, w I was a member of the, B, uh, the, B, B, the BMFA for a couple of years. But when, when my, uh, my membership came up for renewal, I had a look around. I had a look at FPV UK, right? Which was only, tw it's only 25 quid a year, so it's about half the price of the BMV. And everything else is pretty much the same. The liability insurance isn't as much as the BMFA. You get 12 million pounds liability insurance with the BMFA. You, I think you only get 5 million with the FPV UK. But, but anyway, I thought, well, what I'll do is, I've been, I've been part of the BMFA for two years. I'll, I'll say, in, instead of renewing my membership with them at 50 quid, I'll try FPV UK for a year at half the price and see how I got on with that. And it's article, you're still covered with article 16, right? That That's the, um, that's article 16 there, right? Uh, and you can, you can print it out. That's article 16. So what Article 16 allows you to do if you're a member of a group here is it allows you to fly a larger drone such as a Mavic 3 in a recreational area and you, you don't have the limit of 150, having to stay horizontally 150 metres away from buildings or people or 50 metres away from buildings and people, uninvolved people or buildings if you have your A2C of C it allows you to fly over buildings and over people with, imagine them having a 30 metre bubble, sphere bubble round about them. So as long as you are higher than 30 metres, you can fly over uninvolved people. And as long as you're 30 metres above buildings, you can fly over buildings. That with a big, bigger drone, such as the Wallace DJI Mavic 3. Okay, so it doesn't allow you the same freedom with a mini drone like you can fly r within five metres of people in buildings, uh, but it allows you to use a larger drone. Weight. I mean, th of course you're going to be 30 metres above buildings and 30 metres above people because <laughs> just it's common sense. So it allows, you to fly, it allows me to fly uh, much, much closer to buildings and much, much closer to people than I could if I wasn't a member of an association such as FPV UK or BMFA, right? So that's that's why it's in anyone's interest who has a bigger drone. If you've only got a mini, then unless you want to join to get the the liability insurance, public liability insurance that comes with your membership and access to some some uh, members only chats and, and, and hubs and different things like that. And there's a there's a lot of extra wee things that you get. Social social things are quite good too. But uh, if you have a bigger drone, e e anything bigger than a mini, even like an Air 3 or an Air 2 or an Air 2S or, or, or an FPV, an Avata or an FPV, then I think it's probably, it would be worth your while joining one of these organisations so that you can fly under Article 16. So what is this? This, I carry this with me every, uh, everywhere I go. It fits in my, a slot in my backpack. It's a bit battered because I carry this with me everywhere I go. I've carried it for years and years. 
And I just wanted to show you this because uh, a lot of people may think that uh, I just go out and throw my drones up and randomly willy-nilly <laughs> just fly about and don't care about what I'm doing. I don't care about anybody or anything. I just, I'll do what I like and who cares, blah, blah. <laughs> but it's not. It's absolutely not. And I carry this thing about everywhere I go so that if the police decide to come up to me and want some information, right, I've got it all here. Now, I would never show this to any member of the public or any ranger <laughs> that asked. Uh, it's only the police where you're obliged to give them certain amounts of information, right? Operator ID, possibly flyer ID. And in Scotland, in some circumstances, name, address, date of birth, place of birth and nationality, okay? So I carry this about everywhere. I've never ever had to show it to anyone, but I always have it. And there's, a, there's an, an important thing I'm going to show you in here. But what it contains is, all it contains in here is, first of all, that's my F, FPV UK uh, membership, right? I'm, I'm not, obviously not going to show you my name and address, but that's my FPV membership, right? I carry that with me, right? And that's to prove that I'm a member of an organisation you can fly under Article 16. And this is the, this is Article 16 here. So if the cop, if the cops, the police are there and they want to know, I can say, look, just have a look through that folder while I've got the drone in there. Let me bring the drone back. You have a read through that. And uh, when, when you finish reading through that, I'll have a, and I've landed the drone, I'll have a chat with you. Right, so I carry that everywhere. And what I also carry with me, I, I, I don't carry it in the folder because... Every single time I go out to fly, every time I go and fly, before I go out and fly, I create a risk assessment. I'm going to show you it now. So there's my risk assessment. I just do this for myself. That's my own risk assessment, right? Uh, and it's the name of my pilot, the date of the assessment. So the, the last time I was out flying was the third. That was two days ago, right? So I made the, the risk assessment before I went out to fly, right? Uh, that's my UK... FPV UK number, right, to prove that I can fly under Article 16. That's the site, the name of the site, that's the name of where I was flying. It was Craig and Gillen Estate. The video is is still being processed. <laughs> That'll be coming out in a few weeks. And the latitude and the longitude of the site, that's it there, okay? Now, here are the risks, the hazards. I, I, I have identified three hazards, right? Danger of the drone colliding with uninvolved persons or property below the flight path. Another hazard is collisions with other airborne vehicles. And another hazard is interference to operator, that's me, from uninvolved persons. That's the hazards that I identified for this particular flight, because I know where it is, right? So in a, in a risk assessment, you may, I've put down who might be harmed and how. That's how, how, the people, might, how people might be harmed. What are you already doing to control the risks? This is what a risk assessment is. How do you alleviate those risks? So this is how I alleviate the risks, right? Any further action I need to take to control the risks? None for that one. Continue to monitor the area for that one and monitor the area for this one, right? And if there's any comments I want to put in, I can put there. Now, you can, you can make as many lines as you like, and that will be dependent on how many risks that you... Where's the whole thing? How many risks that you identify for each flight, every single flight? Now, just let me bring that up again. I, I make a risk assessment for every single flight I do, and it might. This one only had three, three, three lines. Another one might have five or ten. It'll obviously have a different latitude and longitude. It'll have a different name of the flying site. It'll have a different date that I did the assessment, because because each flight is different. Now, I do that, a risk assessment, because to, to fly under Article 16, you're required to have a risk assessment in place. And I can upload that and upload the flight logs and everything to either a BMFA or, or FPV UK if I want to. But I have I keep a record of all, all my risk assessments. Now, I don't print the risk assessment out and take it with me because I'd have to print out one every single day. And if I'm doing two flights in a day, I'd have to print out two. So what I do is I just share it with my phone. So I've got, I have the, I have the risk assessment on my phone. So if the police come up and, talk and, and stop me, well, no, stop me. If the police come up and say, are you licensed 
Is it always that? Are you licensed to fly that drone? I can say, look, I'm not licensed. I have a flyer ID and there's an operator ID on the drone. Here's my operator ID. Here's my name. Here's my operator ID. Here's my membership of this group that allows me to fly under Article 16. What is Article 16? You're probably wondering, Constable. Well, it's all explained in here. And it, it tells you the type of uh, drone that you're allowed to fly under Article 16 and the circumstances that you're, you're allowed to fly. You might see in there, now I probably wouldn't tell them this if I was flying the drone, I'd wait till I landed. So you might see in there, that, it, or, or they might say, oh it says in here that for that type of drone you're flying, to be a member of this group you need a risk assessment. I don't see a risk assessment in here. <laughs> and I'll say no, it's on my phone. Boom, because... Every time I fly, it's a brand new risk assessment, so I don't want to be printing out a sheet every single day because printer ink is very expensive. I think it's the most expensive liquid in the world. Uh, so it's on my phone, so I can show them the risk assessment on the phone. I've got my public liability insurance on the front page of there. tells you that it's £5 million pounds, uh, in insurance. So that's what I take out with me every time I fly, and then I've never had to show it to anyone right in the past almost well, three and a half, almost four years I've been flying. Never had to take it out of my bag. But I always do. And because if you're going to be flying under Article 16, you need to make a little risk assessment. So here's the thing. If anyone thinks, oh, I, I wouldn't know where to start with that myself, you know, if you email me or you go into my Discord and message me, you'll never catch me on Facebook. I'm never on there now. But if you get into Discord and, and, and email me, uh, message me or you or you email me I'll, I'll send you a copy of the my risk assessment i'll send you a blank a blank one a blank template of my risk assessment and i'll send you the pdf uh, file of article 16 uh, i'll say i'll also send you a redacted copy of my fpv uk membership if you want that too just so you can have a look at a, a look at Android three uh, and I'll, I'll do that for nothing, in it, but if you wanted to buy me a coffee <laughs> for it, I would appreciate, I would accept that, but I'll do that for nothing. So if anyone wants to get themselves a risk assessment and make themselves up a wee folder like that, then then I'll, just just let me know and, and I'll sort it out for you. Now, I know I didn't, I didn't go into a lot of detail about the Article 16 because uh, Sean from Geeks Fan, it does it much better than I could. For all you geeks that love number crunching and you like paragraphs and art, you know different things, sub paragraphs and sections of paragraphs. So he he goes into it all. Right? I know I know a lot of you are like oh god I couldn't sit through a, a whole video like that, but I did and it's it's worth it because even if you can't remember everything he's saying, at least he does tell you everything about it. And then you can refer back to me saying, look, this is what it does for the Article 16. Okay, here's the, let's get it down to that. It allows you to fly a bigger drone within 30 metres of a spherical globe, spherical bubble around people, uninvolved people and buildings with a bigger drone that you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be able to do if you weren't flying under Article 16 and you can only fly under Article 16 if you're a member of one of these associations. 